All right, feeling pretty good about this kit. Especially once we switch to the Eagle Shield. Look at this bad boy. God, it's so big. Oops. Just to roll. Oh, I'm above the previous item on that. Yep. Eh, I'm okay with keeping myself at this load. I can still roll decently. Unfortunately, we now have to make the long trip back. Oh, I guess I should mention that this key, this door here can actually be opened by the master key that you can take at the, as your gift at the start of the game. Uh, so you can actually go to Blight Town as the very first area in the game if you're feeling saucy enough. Not really something I'd recommend, and that's the sort of thing that was like the reason that I decided not to take the master key. Uh, because it isn't, it, it just leads to a completely different gameplay experience than what you would get here. Hello. So it'd probably be easier for us if we take these guys one at a time. Uh, it also gives us a chance to show off our eagle shield. So, you'll notice that we did take a little bit of actual damage there. And the reason for that is that the eagle shield does not have 100% physical resist. The reason for this is that the Eagle Shield was broken as fuck on launch. Like, it's much lighter than almost, than, well, literally every game, other great shield in the game. Except maybe the Bone Mill. Anyway. Uh, and it has, it had such high stability relative to normal shields that by giving up the ability to parry, which this cannot do, it actually does a little bleh, Weak little punch attack with its strong attack. You gain such ridiculous stability that you can, that like so many attacks will just bounce off of you. This has been one of my favorite combos since the game came out. Uh, and even with the chip damage that you take from this shield, it's, it's still pretty fantastic. So I am happy to use it and never ever parry. Meh. Yeah, you'll even notice many of this guy's attacks will bounce off of us when we have this shield. It was a bad decision right there. That's more like it. Yeah, I had meant to use combustion rather than uh, fireball there. Anyway, since we're out here and we actually have a pretty good view, you can you can get a better view of this kind of aqueduct structure that opens up into the hill that we could look down in uh, Firelink Shrine, or the Firelink Shrine is looking down. I don't know the best way to put that. That said, we are just about done with our exploration of the swamp. In fact, we really only have one more direction to go in. You know, on the off chance I can ever actually find the damn ladder. Oh, it is right over there. It's very easy to miss these torches, I will I will say that. Another reason people have a lot of trouble. away. Mosquitoes are very, very annoying, which I guess is appropriate. Alright, this can be a rather difficult thing to do and not die. Uh, the best I can recommend for you is to try to do that. Do your best to not fall too far onto here, because if you actually go all the way down, you will just get dumped straight into the swamp again. I think there might be an item. But I've been wrong about things before.
Huh, guess not. Yeah, see, that guy, even his fire-breathing attack bounces off of us. But let's not dwell on that too much. Another large Titanite shard for our troubles. Master ahead. Well, not an incorrect statement, but one that doesn't really make much sense to us at the moment. A lot of messages. Need pyromancy. I wonder what those could mean. Uh, oh, I guess I didn't get an item all the way over there. It is worth noting that there is a ring that makes it so you can properly walk in the swamp. Uh, I didn't get it because I want to show off that area later. Wow! I did not see them there. Oh, god damn it. I should have gone to the bonfire first. <laughs> Hello again, Andre. Okay, we're back, baby. So, a much less foolish approach that you might take oh, didn't kill you. is to always go directly for the bonfire whenever you happen to make this trip, because you don't want to do what I just did. Um, I was actually going to say this after the last session, or like after the last long trip that we did, but this is really the part of the game where the fact that you can't fast travel yet starts to wear on you. Like, honestly, I'm very happy that this game starts off without a fast travel because it really does force you to consider, like, to learn how the world is laid out and kind of... It makes everything feel connected in a way that Dark Souls 2's map never really does. Um, and I mean, part of that is just the level design of Dark Souls 2, but part of it is just that nothing ever really feels connected in the same... Or like, part of it is that you can just jump from place to place, so you never get that that real feeling of connection between things. Alright, so let's actually keep our eyes open here. My monitor's a bit dark, so I didn't actually see... this fucking guy. Oh, there's two of them here. Huh. <laughs> Today I learned something. I'm gonna have to be really careful about this. Oh, there we go. Got one of them. These are boulder thrower fuckers. I'm sure that that's what their official name is in the lore. You can backstab them. It is not a bad idea to take advantage of that. They do have weird iframes, though. Oh dear. They can override your shield. Oh, Jesus. That was me getting screwed by the camera. That was almost extremely bad. Oh dear. Come on. Oof. These are very, very difficult and really quite annoying enemies to fight. Which is, of course, why they... Ugh. Okay, that would have killed me. So thank God. So, of course, they put them between you and the boss. And make them drop dung pies. The fuckers. Let's see what they were guarding. I mean, we've already gone to all that work, right? A great club. Great club. This would probably have been a good thing to make holy as well. Strike damage, yeah. Giant tree branch serves as a wooden club. Smashes enemy from upside the head. The leaping attack is a trademark of clubs. And this giant club is no exception. Also requires a whopping 28 strength to wield in one hand. But 
We may give that a try at some point. Alright, let's go get our souls. You'll notice that there are more of those boulder guys over there. I just did not realize I was so close to the ones on this side. Um, and since we're here, since I believe we've now gotten, we basically cased this place, let's go back, become human again, and take on the one last thing that I'm looking to take on here. Not going to use an Estus Flask here, because that would be a, a bit of a waste. But we are going to reverse our hollowing. And restore some humanity. Let's see, no summons around here. I might summon for this boss, just for show it off purposes, and also because I don't really care to. But really only if there's an actual player to summon. Uh, you can summon Mildred right in front of the boss door here, but... Eh. So the easiest way I've found to get to the boss if you don't have the uh, ring that helps you with this is by taking this route. This will more or less help you avoid the boulder guys and only poison you once. Which, trust me, is a godsend. Hello. Yeah. Oh, and make it much give you give you much less time to have to deal with the fireflies. Or mosquitoes, or whatever you want to call them. Swamp shit lords. Ugh, there we go. Here! Yes. So Approaching over this way, and you, we, we immediately find another change of thing. What first looks just like a normal beach-type area, uh, quickly gets a little bit webbier. Oop, I guess I can't run up this. And if you wander around here enough... Find a doorway. Boss ahead. And enter Quilog's Domain. I really like the way that this is set up. Like, you... You've been through the whole Poison Swamp, and then you, you're so happy to have gotten out of it, but you immediately know that this is, like, building up to something. And the, there's the webs, there's these creepy egg things that look weird at first, which actually don't want to attack. In fact, I think this message might say it. Yeah, be wary of attacking. That's because if you do attack these things, they will actually turn into much more annoying enemies. And in fact, they aren't bothering you. They're just, uh, praying in the direction of that boss door. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about this. Uh, okay, let's see. This is... Ah, a person. Sure, why not? I believe this will be Maneater Mildred's summon sign. Yep. This is an NPC. Let's see if we get the proper connection. Uh, the netcode in this game is not great. I got a wave, yeah. Hello there. Let's go kill a boss.
is Chaos Witch Quilog. It's another pretty good, pretty interesting cutscene, although I definitely could have done without the cheesecake. Summoning failed? That's... <laughs> I'm not sure why that message would have come up. Ah, no. Wow. I don't think I've ever been beaten by this boss in that way. Uh, when they use that fire attack, you want to be really careful, but... I ended up walking into the lava, and uh, it was kind of the death of me. Whoops. Alright, after a uh, near-death experience, I have a bit less mana than I would- or a bit less Estus than I would like, but uh, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, there we go. This is one where the cutscene doesn't play after the first time. Yes, Chaos Witch Quilog. Oh, oh. It shoots lava. It's a giant spider lady. It has a lady on it. Like I had said, I like the cutscene, but the the cheesecake at the end is a bit much. Jeez, she does not usually spit this much lava out, and I'm really not a fan of it. That tends to make things difficult over here. Uh, the lava will fade over time. So that's good. Jeez, that actually does quite a bit of fire damage. I may need to switch this out. Or switch my shield out. But probably not during the fight. I'm not used to her making this much lava. Kind of makes it tough to get behind her, honestly. Which is, as with most things, really the best way to do it. As you can see, most of her swings are directly in front of her, so if you're close, you can often get by without too much trouble. Watch out when it lifts up in basically any way. It's a good idea to keep your shield up in general for this fight. Uh, you can block most of the attacks, although as I showed, it does fire damage and that can uh, work through your shield if you don't have one that combats it well. Definitely don't use a wooden shield for this. Oh jeez, she's getting right up in my business here. Uh-oh. Now when it goes up like that, it's either using the explosion attack that got us killed last time, or doing the, uh, large or doing the large explosion, sorry, or doing a slamming attack that it just did there. This is a bit of a tough fight to talk over, so I really do have to kind of concentrate. You will, you do notice she is missing a lot of her attacks because I am in this place. Oh, now she is definitely, you know, when she raises it up like that, it's about to use the explosion attack, and it's pretty tough to get away from that. You're already down to one Estus. This is uh, going well. I may need to summon help. For being a fairly large monster fight, this one is pretty interesting. I am... I do like it. I mean, we're not doing a huge amount of damage here, but we are making progress.
Yeah, the best way to actually dodge these sword attacks like this is to just get right up in her business. Just be careful, because she could make you explode. And of course, she can also walk you into this lava. You will notice that the spider, like the way her animations work, the spider is definitely like a separate entity from her because she will like, you know, pat it on the head and, you know, you, you can actually, a lot of her tells in this fight are from the way that she treats the spider, which is really neat. Like there's a lot of love put into this animation and not in a creepy way that she can often mean that. I am in a pretty good place, but of course you do have to be careful of attacks that could just one-shot you. Which is really why being in these legs is often a fairly dangerous decision. Because there are a lot of attacks that can hella punish you if you're not being careful and paying attention. Let's get away from this lava. Lava is often a good chance to attack it as well. I can't attack from there because they're standing in a lava patch. We're doing pretty well though. There's also there's also a pretty big amount of diversity in Quilog's attacks. I mean, there are three different ways that it can shoot lava at you, which is pretty neat because it really does mean that you have to be on your toes no matter what you're doing. Just be careful of just standing directly in front of her, though. Like, if she's going for some slashes, you want to be right up in that spider grill. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oof. Okay. It was not the super attack that you really have to be careful of. Uh, also worth noting, the giant spider legs do have hitboxes. So close! Nice! Woof! This is definitely an example of not being, like, extremely well kitted for this fight, but making it work anyway. There's a lot of fights that you can do like that, and for it, we get Twin Humanities and a Soul of Quelog. Let's see what that has to say. Acquire many souls, or create a unique weapon. Soul of Quich of Quilog, once daughter of the Witch of I once daughter of the Witch of Ihalith, but now a Chaos Demon. Special sub beings have special souls, and Quilog's soul contains all aspects of chaos, used to acquire a huge amount of souls or create a unique weapon. So we get a little bit of story that that spider lady we just fought was related to the Witch of Ihalith, and it kind of slowly fills in more of the gaps between. You know, that the, you've, you, you're getting like little breadcrumb bits of story here as you go along. Uh, and you wouldn't be incorrect if you happen to notice or if you happen to think that Quilog looks, uh, or that the, the mutations that Quilog has had, that have happened to Quilog, look awfully similar to the mutations that seem to have happened to the people of Blight Town. But all that said. We have a lever to pull.
And with that, we've rung the bell to Quelog for Quelog's domain and opened the way to Sen's fortress. It's been a quite a ride, but I think we've done fairly well with it so far. Uh, and I think that's probably a good place to stop. So, I'll see you guys next time when we're going to not go to Sen's Fortress. Actually, no, fuck it, sorry. I want to talk about how good that cutscene is telling you, uh, is at telling you where to go. Like, if you haven't noticed that there's that big fortress area that you couldn't go to before, it gives you a shot of the church and then pans over to the fortress. It gives you the shot of the gate opening and showing you directly like the church building where Andre is. It gives you, it, it shows the parish in the background of shots of that big giant. So it becomes very clear that the game is telling you this is where you're supposed to be from here. And it's, it's really good because after ringing that bell, you might have no idea where the fuck to go, you know? Like, this has been your quest for the whole game. And you've done it. What now? I, I really like it. That said, instead of going to Sen's Fortress, we're going to do a bit of uh, other exploring next time. So, I'll see you all for that. Bye bye